We're going to start a, a new series, no? And it has to do, kung that is going deeper in the Word, this series has to do about going deeper in worship. Okay? How many of you are excited for that? Okay? I want us to pray right now <coughs> as we go into the Word. <coughs> Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for this wonderful afternoon. And Lord, I pray, open our hearts, open our eyes to the truth of your Word. Lord, as we seek to understand what true worship is, Lord, I pray that it will become a, a reality and a revelation for us so that may, we may truly worship you in spirit and in truth as you desire. Lord, override my preparation and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Actually, la this week, no, actually last, last Monday, uh, Destiny, in the last 20 years that we had as a ministry, as a church, we had our first ever worship camp. Okay? And what was it about? The first time we gathered all the different worship teams you know, from the different Destiny churches nationwide. You know? So uh, our, our worship band, our, our, our team from Destiny Cebu, Destiny Davao, Destiny Alaminos, Baguio, you know, gathered together, plus of course our, our, uh, our teams here in Metro Manila. Okay? And we had a three-day retreat at... Uh, uh, what was it called? Makiling Recreation Center. It was a beautiful, beautiful center, beautiful recreation center. No, uh, it had several basketball courts, volleyball courts. There was horseback riding, fishing, and, and the, the rooms are very, very nice, very, very clean. It's a, it's 28 hectares on Luang Talaga, so <clears throat> uh, we had, we really had fun. But more than that, no, we no the team, the, the people who were there. Had such a wonderful time of really, you no, know, really, uh, what's this? Finding more about worship. You no, know, I, I invited some of the uh, uh, some of the best uh, uh, people I know who could speak regarding worship. You no, know? Pastor Al Termolo, who uh, is uh, actually the man behind the song. How many of you know that that old old song by Gary Valenciano? Gaya ng dati. It was way back in the 90s. No, anyone here? No, you would admit you're about that old. You know that song. It's, it's a powerful song. Actually, Al Termolo, Pastor Al Termolo was the man behind that, that song. He was the one who composed it and he gave it to Gary Valenciano to sing it. And so we had Pastor Al share about the uh, basic theology of worship. Such a wonderful and powerful time. And then he, he, he shared about uh, 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 how to compose a song. That was a fun fun session and we had pastor Edith Mendoza who is a, a well-known worshiper in the whole you know, in the Philippines no one of the most uh, highly respected worship leaders literally has led worship to about crowds of a million people okay and then he you know she's been in that ministry literally for I think uh, uh, 40 years okay? and so you no know, the experience itself she has really had a lot to share you know we had such an amazing time at one point as I was listening to, to Asabi, you know what? And how I wish everyone in the church were here. This, was not, this is not only for the worship team. And then I, I realized I need, I need to preach on worship again. You know, for people to understand what real worship is. I think only a third or even less of our own team from, from, from Manila was only able to join. Eh? No, uh, I don't know if I can forgive those who didn't join. <laughs> I was looking at the band playing a while ago, and no, it was only Julia, okay, who actually joined the camp when way back we already announced it. Okay? You know, I think some people need to repent. <laughs> the next time we have it, okay, I'm gonna make it a requirement. Don't worry, guys. Those of you who didn't join, you're forgiven. May God have mercy on you. <laughs> no, 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 just kidding. So, so, ano nga ba tong worship? Hey, can I tell you something? Sometimes when we hear the word worship, usually we limit it as, as ano eh, something to do with church, religion. 
But the truth of the matter is this. Worship is not actually strange for every one of us. Even if you don't go to church. Even if you, there, no, even if you, don't, no, you haven't really been to church all your life. It does not mean you have no idea or concept of worship. You might not be conscious of it. But ang totoo niyan, likas sa'yo, no, bilang isang tao, itong, we have this capacity na sumamba eh. Let me prove this to you. Okay? Even if people who are atheists, no, those who believe in God, those who are not religious, I promise you, okay, it does not mean that they don't worship. May, they may not be using the term, but the truth is, as a human being, okay, whether we like it or not, we worship. Okay? It may be God, it may, not, it may be some other thing. But the truth is, no, hindi mo may tatangge na no, there is something inside of you that longs to worship something. Okay? Example, to, give you a, to, to help you better understand this, no? and, and I believe this is one of the best arguments why I, I also don't believe in evolution. Eh? Okay? Besides the fact that there is no other creature in the whole world that comes close to the human being. No? Hey, hey, you look at a monkey, you look at a chimpanzee, hey, he, he might be able to walk uprightly, but that's just about it. Hey, there's just no, no, literally oceans apart from a monkey to a human being. But le let me... Let me tell you something so distinct and so unique about us as people. Okay? We, ikaw lang, tayo lang bilang tao, are the only creatures who are able to appreciate and are captivated by beauty. By something wonderful. Okay? When a dog looks at a bone, bakita siya ng buto, it's automatic, dinidesire ng isang aso ang isang buto. Bakit? Instinct niya eh. Kinakain niya yun eh. Eh? But I have yet to, to, no, we have yet to see, nakakita na ba kayo ng aso who is simply looking in awe and appreciating the beauty of a bone. <laughs> Kahit na ba kayo aso talagang titignan yan? Wow, look at this bone. The way it is shaped. Wala! Walang pusa na nakaka-appreciate ng beauty ng, for example, no, isdang kinakain niya. Eh? Only us, as no, there are no other animals, no other creatures, eh, who are able to, yun nga eh, to be captivated by beauty or wonder. Except you and me. Check this out. No? How many of you, uh, had this experience, you're walking uh, one day or driving by the road and all of a sudden you see a rainbow and, and, and all of a sudden you just had to stop or halos no, ma-accidente ka, kakadrive at the same time kakakuha ng video. <laughs> and you cannot just help in all but respond. Think about it. No? There is nothing in you in terms of just simply life why you are captivated, why you would respond to such a beauty. Tayo lang ang mga tao, for example, responds to, you no, know, are captivated by the colors and shapes of things, you no? Know? When we were in Europe just a couple of weeks ago, we were in, uh, in, uh, was it in Brussels, no? Or, or in, in, in Amsterdam. And one of the things that I, I, I so much wanted to do, but for a lack of time failed to do, was, you no, know, visit, you no, know, visit uh, the Van Gogh Museum. And alam nyo, what's in the Van Gogh Museum? Yeah, you're right, the paintings of Van Gogh. Nandun yung ano, well-famous, starry, starry nights, paint your palette blue and gray. If you've seen that painting, and, it, and if, if you're not artistic, probably the first time you see that painting, you're like, this is a masterpiece, and it all has swirls of blue and yellow. But then, when you spend more time on it, you're like, Wow. And why? What is in us that God hardwired no, to appreciate 
Beauty. Eh? Bakit ka nakikilay? <laughs> Because there's something in you that, that you nga eh, desires, you want, we want to be beautiful as well. Because you nga eh, there's about the image and likeness of God that is in us. And there's no other creation, no other living thing. Not, nothing even comes close to how we respond to beauty and to wonder. Are you there? Okay? That's why we end up, di ba, ina-adore natin yung isang bagay. Wow, this is beautiful. Even if, you know, you're an atheist, like, wow, ang ganda na na. Wow, that's amazing. Okay? Because that's hardwired inside of you. Worship is never strange to any human being. That is a fact. Right? Right? Okay. So, let's, let's look at, you know, having said that, that, uh, that worship is something hardwired inside every one of us. No? Okay. I want us to read this verse in John chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. John chapter 4, verses 21 to 24. In this particular verse, Jesus was engaged in a conversation with a Samaritan woman. In fact, we're going we're gonna to look at, into this verse in further detail later, but I'd just like to highlight something. So Jesus was having this conversation with a Samaritan woman, and in verse 21, ito sinabi ni Jesus. Sabi niya, okay, Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Verse 23, yet a time is coming and has now come when, go ahead, read that, read that line, when true worshipers. I want you to highlight that. Let that stick to your mind right now. No? Can you repeat it after me? True worshipers. Okay, say it once again. One, two, three, go. True worshipers. No, sabi dito, they are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. Okay? God is looking for what? True worshipers. No? This is the kind of worship that the Father is seeking. God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? Now, since there is what you call, from, from what Jesus has been telling us here, since there is what you call true worship, then the opposite is also true. Kung merong true worshipers, merong fake or false worshipers. Tama ba? And before we, we go on trying to know what is true worship, siguro it would be better to find out what God considers as false or wrong or fake worship. Okay? Number one, eh, there is what you call, no, can you put up the slides? Eh? There is what you call unacceptable worship. Okay? Any unacceptable worship? In Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 to 6, we read the story of okay, the first uh, sons, the first children of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. Basahin natin ito. Go. Can you put it up? Okay. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from the sum of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Cain was very angry. And his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Okay. Why is your face downcast? Go ahead. Next slide. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Now, okay. how is it that the offering, that the worship of Cain was unacceptable? Okay. It has to do with what? No, he did it not in the right way manner, not in the right spirit. Later on in the book of Hebrews, you find out no, what was wrong in the, in the kind of worship that, that 
Cain offered. Now, if you think about it, they almost offered the same thing. Si Abel offered, no, uh, uh, what's this? Animals from his flock, while si Cain, being a farmer, offered no, vegetables or the fruits that he harvested from his field. Okay? Parang parehas naman yung kanilang pag-aalay, pero ang naging problem pala ni Cain, in the New Testament, you will see it, sabi doon that he did not worship, he didn't offer it in faith. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay, so what's, how, how does this apply to us? Is it possible that on a physical level, you, know, you come to church, you sing the song like everyone else, but then you're not seeing it, you're not singing it in faith. And that's why some people, no, no, same, same church, same service, some people talagang breakthrough, breakthrough sila, they're in the presence of God and God is, God is, they're having an encounter with God while someone is just simply standing there, not being affected, simply singing the song, not having an experience of God. What could be the problem? Because it was not offered in faith. Are you there? Hey, we need to have faith. Faith is believing, trusting in God. We walk by faith, not by sight. No, we believe that, Lord, whatever the circumstance, Lord, we can trust in you. Umulan man, bumagyo man, Lord, nagtitiwala kami sa iyo. Hey, mas masarap yung worship pag may pagsubok, di ba? Right? Right? Pag may sinuungkang baha para makapunta sa church. Mas, mas dama mo eh, Lord. Hey, right? Hey, and and, and that, no, that's, that's why Okay, that's why Abel's worship offering was acceptable while Cain no, was unacceptable. So there was what you call unacceptable worship. Number two, what else? Okay, there are unacceptable worshipers, but there are also what you call ignorant worshipers. Any ignorant worshipers? Okay? Sino naman tong mga klase ng taong ito? A good example for this, you will find in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 17. Okay. Acts chapter 17, starting with verse uh, 22. Okay. Si Paul visited the, you know, the, the nation of Greece, and he was in the city of Athens, which is at that time the capital of Greece. And you need to understand, during that time, Greece, you know, Athens was one of the you know, major cities of the world. Okay. Although it was already the Roman era, okay, still... No, the Greek influence, no, the, no, and, and the, uh, the Greek uh, what's, uh, uh, wealth was very much still, uh, no, st still can be seen. So Paul was there, and this is what he observed. Sabi niya, Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walk around and I look carefully at your objects of worship, I found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. Okay? So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. Now, as, as Paul was going over the city, he cannot help but notice you know, how religious actually the Athenians were. Bakit? Ang dami niyang nakita ng iba't ibang klaseng altar, rebulto, nandun yung templo ni Sus, nandun yung templo ni... No, ni, sino ba mga Greek gods and goddesses if you know your Greek mythology? Okay? Si Athena, no, si... Oh, yeah, all, all those, yeah, whatever. Okay? All those Greek gods and goddesses. And you know what? They were, not, they were not just mere myths at that time. That was the religion of the day. And literally, the, the Greeks were worshipping this. Eh? And yun nga, silang Diyos, God of thunder, God of war, God of... Lahat ng makita ng bagay, kailangan merong God. No, ganun yun. Ganun talaga yun. And in their desire to make sure that they don't miss out on anyone. Kasi nga, you know, they, they, there is something inside of us that longs to, to give worship no, to, to, to something or to someone. And their desire that na, naisip na nila, matatalino rin itong mga Athenians eh. Hey, hey. We might be missing out on a God that we don't know. 
How about, you know what? They put up an altar and it says, to the unknown God. And Paul saw that. And sabi ni Paul, this God that you do not know, I will tell you about. Apparently, he was talking about the one and only true God. I like how Paul no, used even eh, the religion of that time eh, to share Jesus Christ. Pero yun nga, yun yung problem ng mga Athenians. They were worshiping what they do not know. Is it possible that sometimes, no? Kaya you cannot really worship God unless you know Him. Eh? You might have a concept of God. You might think that, yeah, Jesus. But unless you know Him, there's really no worship. And maraming tao, they are ignorant no, as to who God really is. You may have religion, but that doesn't necessarily make you a true worshiper. And there are a lot of ignorant, yun nga yung, yung sinabi rin ni Jesus dun sa Samaritan woman, sabi, you do not know who you worship. Okay? So there are ignorant worshipers, there's an acceptable worship, there's ignorant worship. Number three, there's what you call, you put it up, there's also what you call strange worship. How strange. There's something strange. <laughs> what is strange worship? Leviticus chapter 10 verses 1 to 3 talks about, ito, ibang, ibang klase din to, no? Talks about the two sons of Aaron. They were actually priests. Okay? Now, Given the fact that they were priests, no? in other words, if, if, if the context is panahon natin, this would be your pastors, this would be your worship leaders, your worship team. Okay? So Nadab and Abihu, sabi dito, no, look at this verse, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers and put fire in them and added incense, and they offered, what? Okay? Unauthorized fire before the Lord. Some translations, I think King James or sabi dito, they offered strange fire contrary to his command. Now, okay, Nadab and Abihu already know. Okay, they were not ignorant worshippers. Okay, they are not considered unacceptable worshippers because you know, they have been told by God the prescribed form or way to worship him, to approach him. But you know this, guys? Okay? They totally disregarded what the Lord told them to do. Okay. They think they know better. Or, here's the problem. They treated God with such familiarity. Okay. Sabi dito, so fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. Wow! You cannot treat God lightly. Sometimes we think we can do that. No, we, we, no, but, but God is holy. If we are to come to Him in worship, no, we need to come to Him for who He is and understand. You know, I think, okay, I think here's the problem. Okay? Nadab and Abihu's failure in worship was a result of their view or their understanding of God. A wrong view of God leads to a wrong form of worship. Pag mali ang pagkakilala mo o ang pananaw mo sa Diyos, mali din yung magiging pagsamba mo. At pag mali ang pagsamba mo, mali ang way of living mo. Eh? Sabi dito, Moses then said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke of when he said, among those who approach me, I will be proved holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. Okay? What did Nadab and Abihu did? They didn't honor the Lord. Eh? They took God lightly. Are you there? Are you getting this? Eh? Yung tipong alalim ng worship pagkatapos, no? Nag <laughs> yung pinapatay ng Lord yun. <laughs> Good to know you're in the New Testament. Right? 
No, I'm serious. If we were in the Old Testament, there's going to be a lot of dead people in the church. Praise God. Jesus already died on the cross and offered a sacrifice in behalf of our sins. That's why in a way there's what you call grace. What you deserve is death. What God gave us through Jesus Christ is life. But then again, still, God cannot be treated like that. You have to come to God with a sense of awe and honor that is due Him. He is holy. Ano yung sabi ng holy? holy? Holy means to be set apart, to be no, unique in every aspect. Hindi lang parang holy yan, holy. Hindi, hindi. No, holy is to stand in awe in the beauty of His holiness. Are you there? So there's, eh, there's strange worship. Eh? What else? There is, what you call, put it up. No, number four. Ito. Vain worshipers. Ano yung vain worshipers? Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 to 9. Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 to 9. This is Jesus, no? Telling the crowd, sabi niya, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Can you feel the heart of God in this? this Jesus was actually quoting an Old Testament passage, I think, from Isaiah. And, and you could feel, I mean, this is God's complaint. Sabi niya, this people honor me with their lips. In other words, their worship is merely superficial. It's only outside. No? You can join in the singing, but the Lord doesn't care about your song more than He cares about your heart. Worship is not a function of a mouth. It is a function of your heart. I mean, complain ng Lord, sabi ng mga tao ngayon? Totoo. They worship me with their lips. But the truth is their hearts. It's far from me. And is it possible that sometimes, no, we come to church, and yes, we participate in the singing just like everyone does. We give our offering just like everyone does. No? But our hearts are not into it. It has just become a ritual. It's just become a routine. Okay? Remember... Remember when, when Samuel, the prophet Samuel, was tasked by God to anoint a king? He went into the house of Jesse. Sabi ng Lord sa kanya, go to the house of Jesse. One of his sons is going to become king. Jesse had seven sons. Okay? And so Samuel was there eagerly waiting you know, to, for the sons of Jesse. And when Eliab, the eldest, came out, the first, immediately in Samuel's mind, sabi niya, wow, this guy is going to be king. Let's look at him like, you no. Know, Tall, handsome, muscular, everything that you would ask for, for a king. And just as he was thinking that in his mind, the Lord spoke to him, Samuel, it is not him. And then what did the Lord say? Sabi ng Lord, you see Samuel, here's the problem. Okay? People, humans, look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. Are you there? God looks at your heart. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean we don't sing. No. We make sure that when we sing, our hearts are into it. Tama ba? Or else sabi dito vain worship, okay? The teachings are no, kumaga parang no, wala lang, wala epekto. Kaya nga you know that that old song no, quite an old song, Banal na Aso, Santong Kabayo. In fact, I'm thinking, why did that song become popular? It doesn't have a good feel to it. It's not like a danceable. Banal na Aso, it's not even like that. It's not a sweet, melodious song. It's, it's a rough song. But then, why did it become popular? Because it was speaking truth. Na totoo yun eh, ganun ang mga tao eh. I think that's one of the greatest problems that we have as a nation. No, we're so religious. Truth be told, no, still 90% probably of all Filipinos go to church every Sunday. But then is it probably also true that despite the fact 
that we are highly, very much religious. Eh? Our religion does not touch the heart of God. Di ba? Walang pagbabago. Vain worship. Okay? No? It's the same mouth na ginagamit mo sa pagsamba ng Diyos. The same mouth na ginagamit mo sa pagmumura. No? Pakikipag-away sa asawa mo, sa kapatid mo, sa pagsigaw mo sa... Di ba? Yun ay in vain. God doesn't want that kind of worship. Are you there? Okay? True religion, true worship, I believe is something that's... No? That affects us as a person that is life changing that is life transforming that you actually become better okay if our coming to church is only limited to the one hour that we one or two hours we spend here no and in in the next couple of days the whole week wala na yung pagsamba natin then that kind of worship is vain are you there no we don't want to be vain worshipers we don't want to no, to be strange worshippers. We don't want to be ignorant. We don't want to be, hey, what's the first one? And we don't want to offer unacceptable worship. But also, the last is this. No, We don't want to be idolatrous in our worship. There are what you call idolatrous worshippers. And they're idolatrous. Okay? Psalms 100, okay? Psalms 115, I think. Psalms 115, can you put up the verse? But I, I want everyone to read this verse out loud with me, please. One or three, go. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of man's hands. They have mouth, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. Okay, they have ears, but they cannot hear. They have noses, but they cannot smell. They have hands, but they cannot feel they have feet but they cannot walk they cannot make a sound with their throats those who make them will become like them and everyone who trusts in them like wow now this is crazy okay? God warns us kasi nga hindi mo mapipigilan ng sarili mo na meron kang sasambahin eh na meron kang i-adore that's something that is wired Hardwired inside of us. But here's the problem. No? We might give our affections, we might give you know, the worship that is due God to some other thing, to what you call an idol. And sabi dito, no? okay? he's talking about, the psalmist talks about no? how pe- no? sabi dito, their idols are silver and gold, they are made of man's hands. In other words, crafted, made by people. You know how crazy this is? No, there's another uh, picture of this that Isaiah, I think, gives. Can you put up the verse? Okay. The, the one in Isaiah, when he talks about, uh, okay, this is, this is amazing. Surely he cuts cedars from himself and takes cypress or an oak and raises it for himself. Cedar, cypress, oak, those are kinds of trees. Okay. Sabi daw, isang tao, no, puputol ng punong kahoy, cedar, cypress, or oak, and raise it himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a fir and then the rain makes it grow. Then, it becomes something for a man to burn. So he takes one of them and warms himself with it. Okay? No, sa mga malalamig na panahon, no? okay? mayroon siya ng mga chimney and then when it's cold, what people do is, they cut a tree, wala pang mga gasera nung araw, wala pang mga electric warmers. No, so they were put up a fire and they you know, warm themselves with the wood no, that they cut from the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then again, sabi dito, he also makes fire to make bread. And from the same wood, from the same tree, he makes a god and worship it. Can you imagine how crazy is this? From the same wood na pinanggatong mo, gumawa ka ng Diyos na sinamba mo. Are you kidding me? Can you see how stupid that is? Are you there? And that's why God is so jealous about idolatry. In fact, no, yung Ten Commandments, no, those are commandments for life. Eh. But it's amazing to know that the first command has to do with worship and God forbidding worship to any God. 
Okay? Check it out. Exodus chapter 20. No? Ang sabi dyan, then God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay? You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness. Wala daw kamuka of what is in heaven. Now, you cannot say, hindi, this is God. This is a picture of God that reminds me of His image in heaven. No, no, no. Look at the verse. God forbids it. Sabi, no, no, don't make a picture of me. Don't make an image of me and tell me that this is, why? Did you see me? God, remember what Jesus said? God is a spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Are you there? Hey? Sabi, don't make any likeness of what is in heaven. No, you cannot even claim that. No, this is actually a representation of God in heaven. Above or on the earth beneath or in the water under it, you shall not worship them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, and I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children of the third and fourth generations to those of those who hate me. We cannot have strange worship. We cannot have unacceptable worship. We cannot have vain worship. We cannot have idolatrous worship. If these are false worship, what is true worship? How do we worship? Okay. Knowing that, check this out, we cannot also escape from it. It's what we are meant to be. It's who you are. You want to live for something. You want to, you know, ito yung nakita ko, life is not just exists, it's not only breathing. There is something in us that you want to, you want to give your life away. There's a certain dignity. Kaya nga, ang sarap nung, di ba? Bakit natin itinataas, no? Binibigyan ng galang, ng puga yung mga, mga heroes natin. Kasi, no? Inalay nila yung buhay nila. Merong something about sa pag-aalay ng buhay. Ang problema, is it possible na inaalay natin yung buhay natin sa mga maling bagay o sa maling tao? Hindi mo matatakasan ito. Kahit ang atheist, inaalay niya ang buhay niya sa isang bagay. Eh? Ang tanong nga, no? tama ba? Eh? Let's not go to the full story of uh, John chapter 4. One of my Actually, this is one of my most loved stories in the Bible. The encounter of Jesus with a Samaritan woman. Okay. Let's read this. Okay. John chapter 4, starting with verse 4. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, or Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob have given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Okay? Jacob's well was there. What is Jacob's well? You know, apparently, this well was a very famous landmark in that uh, town. Why? This same well was a well that was dug by none other than Jacob himself. Who's Jacob at that time? He's, he's actually the patriarch, the great ancestor of the whole nation of Israel. Even the, you know, the people of Samaria. Okay? So, no, ganun yung, yung, kumbaga parang, yun yung stature ni Jacob. That's why itong, itong balloon na to was talagang parang, ano, a prestigious well, a, a, a landmark. Kumbaga, a, 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 you can even say, it was probably a pop, pop, ano, a very famous tourist destination, eh, in, in that town. No, maraming nagpapa-selfie doon. Okay. So, now, it was about noon. Okay, go ahead. No, so, so, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. So, Jesus was there. He seated by the well. And there was a Samaritan woman. It was about, let me highlight some stuff. Noon time daw, tanghaling tapat, dumating, merong dumating na isang babae. A lone woman started to come towards the well. For what purpose? To get water from the well. Now, some things that you would like to point out here. First, why was she alone? Now, it was customary for people of that time na yung mga kababaihan, they were actually in charge of bringing water in the home. 
What, was, what were the men doing? Watching TV, no joke lang. Eh? They were, <laughs> no, the, the men were out there in the fields working in the fields. While the women, one of their tasks was getting water from the well. Okay? And usually, no, it is custom that the, wa the women of the town no, get water together. Yun, diba yung mga women, they, they love to do things together. Diba? How many of you ladies, no, iihi lang kayo, dapat magkasama kayo. Iihi tayo. Eh? Ako, kakabahan ako pag merong brother. Iihi tayo. <laughs> diba? well, right? But, but for ladies, uh, you'll always like to be together. That's a time that they bond, kwentuhan sila. Okay? And, and usually, they do it, it's either early morning or late in the afternoon when hindi mainit. Because there's no point why you want to suffer the heat of the sun, no? the Middle Eastern sun, and plus the fact, why is he going by herself? Why is she alone? You'll find out later. Okay? Why is she not here with a community of women in town? Why do it no? suffering under the heat of the Middle Eastern sun? Okay? Anyway, let's proceed. So, the Samaritan woman came to the well and Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? A simple question, okay? Sabi ni Jesus, Miss, pwede bang makiinom? And you'll be surprised at the response of the woman. Sabi niya, you're a Jew and I'm Samaritan, Samaritan woman. Now, there, there's nothing wrong supposedly with the conversation. It's like, parang ganito, probably in the context of our time, no? Kunyari, no? Uh, break sa trabaho. Okay? Nakita mo, meron, meron doon, no? Stranger, naninigarilyo. Tapos gusto mo rin manigarilyo. Parang sinabi mo, pwede mo kasi hindi. <laughs> Parang ganun. Of course, di, no? But what I'm saying is, it's, it's, since the, water, the woman was there drawing water, you know, Jesus took the opportunity, as, might as well to ask if he could have just a glass of water to drink. But rather than obliging, the woman was, sabi niya, you, you need to feel how, how this was being said. Sabi niya, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? What is she saying? Okay? What the woman was suggesting us, you shouldn't even be talking to me. Hudyo ka? Samaritan ako. Let me tell you what's wrong during that time. The, the Jews and the Samaritans, they were not in talking terms. Okay? They hated the guts of one another. A Jew will not dare talk to a Samaritan woman. Why? The Jews think of the Samaritans as impure. They used to be one nation. But the problem is the Samaritans, they in a way rebelled against Israel. And rather than coming to, coming to the temple for worship, they decided we're going to worship where we want. Eh? No, they stopped coming to God for worship. They started worshiping in the mountains and started worshiping different idols. And so the Jews, they look at the Samaritans, they literally, they, they treat them as dogs, unclean. No, dogs were not pets during those days. Eh, dogs were looked down upon with disgust. Eh? And so the, the woman was taking her back like, why are you talking to me? And parang, this was a way for her to, parang ba makagante na parang, oh, ganon. So now, since you wanted water, you talk to me, excuse me. How dare you talk to me? Kaya yabang yung mga Jews kayo. Okay? And then, you know, this is what Jesus had to answer. Very interesting answer. Jesus said this, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now, picture this, ladies. No? Imagine that you're that girl and all of a sudden there's a stranger sitting by the well, ask you for a drink and you, you know, and, and, you, he's a Samar you, you're a Samaritan, you're a Jew, says, why, why am I even talking to you? You shouldn't even be talking to me. Okay? And all of a sudden, the, now we understand where Jesus was coming from, but the, the lady doesn't know that this is Jesus. Okay? For her, it's just a stranger. Tagkatapos ang sagot sa'yo eh, Miss, baka pagkila, kung kilala mo lang ako, ikaw pa humingi ng tubig sa akin. And I would have given you living water. What would you be thinking? If you're that lady, you're like, wow. Ang hangin. <laughs> like, kung kilala ko daw. Diba? You would be thinking like that, right? 
Like, who's this man thinks he is? Like, if I knew him, right? No, if I knew him, he would have given me living water. Sabi ng babae, sir, as you can see, the, no, you have nothing to draw. You wala kang panalok and the well is very deep. Where can you get this living water? A bear? <laughs> eh? And then he goes on to say, are you greater than our father Jacob? Are you, are you telling me that no, you're more famous? I don't even know you. I know Jacob. He built this well. So are you saying you're better than our forefather Jacob? Eh? Who gave us this well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Eh? And you know what? Why did Jesus respond? He was egging. Kung mas lalo niya nga, no? He was trying to get this woman to, 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 to converse with her. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a, them a spring, welling up to eternal life. Now, okay. okay. Think about this. If you think that that's going to make the woman believe. Remember, this is a stranger. Okay? What, what if a stranger tells you, you know what? I have this water. Alam nyo, one time mo lang inumin, hindi ka na uling mauhaw. Anong sabi mo? Networking, ha? <laughs> Networking. Eh. Di ba? Anong binibenta mo? Tubig? Tubig na living water na hindi ka na uling mauhaw. Eh? And sabi, no, sabi ni, you will never go thirsty again. Eh? Now, this is already the 21st century. And di ba? Even right now, if somebody, no, put it in context. If somebody tells you, I'm going to give you water and you will never have it to be thirsty again, would you believe that person? You're going to be thinking, this is a scam. This is not only a networker, this is a scam. Right? Even with the technology that we have, there is no such thing as a water. If it is strange now, eh, don't you think that it was strange then? The woman was probably scared. Like, no, this guy is not only yabang, he is crazy. Mila antipatiko si Raulo pa. Baliw tong tao ito. Eh? Bu, no, ano? Budul-budul gang to. <laughs> eh? And then sabi, no, the, and the woman said, Okay, sir, give me this water so that I won't, I don't, I, so that I won't get thirsty again and I have to keep on coming here to draw water. Now, don't think that the woman suddenly believed. No, no. It was more like a sarcastic, Oh, Really? Talaga, sige, give me that water. There. <laughs> eh? Para hindi ako pabalik-balik dito. Sige nga, patunayan mo, give me that water. And then Jesus said, go call your husband. Sabi ko na networking eh. <laughs> binary to, binary. <laughs> diba? <laughs> right? <laughs> Go call your go call your husband. Sabi no woman. Excuse me, I have no husband. Now, what is the connection of this? Jesus was talking about water. And of the next thing you know, when the woman was daring her to to give her that water, he calls for the husband, and the woman said, "I have no husband." And this is Jesus said, "As you are right when you said you have no husband." Why? Move on. Ano sabi jan? Read a verse. This is what Jesus said. The fact is you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. Wow. All of a sudden we are given a glimpse to the kind of life the woman had. What kind of woman, what kind of lady would involve herself with five men? In other words, he had already had five relationships. He is on his sixth. But even this man doesn't consider him as his wife. And the woman was shocked. Sabi niya, hindi lang ito scammer, hindi lang ito networker, is stalker. 
Tinitingnan mo Facebook ko. No? no, no, no. Of course, he didn't say that. He was, he was shocked. And he, it dawned on her that this man was no ordinary man. Sabi niya, I perceive that you're a prophet. Now, now you know why the woman was by herself. The woman of the city don't want to be associated with what, no? Sinong babae, sinong may, may, may asawa ang gustong makihalubilo sa isang kilalang taong maninira ng pamilya, mga agaw ng asawa. That's why kahit na mainit at mahirap, nagtitiis siya na pumunta sa tanghaling tapat. Bakit? Kasi kung sasabay siya dun sa mga grupo ng babae, pag-uusapan lang siya, nasasaktan din siya kahit gano'n ang estado ng buhay niya. Okay? Sabi niya, I have no husband. Sabi niya, Jesus, you're right. Because you have had five husbands and the sixth one is not even your husband. The woman said, Sir, I realize you're a prophet. Now, there's a shift. It seemed a shift. There's a shift in the conversation, but this is all tied together. Okay? Sabi dito, no? Go ahead, next verse. Verse 20. Okay? Sabi ng babae, Sir, tell me this. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place of worship must be Jerusalem. The woman started to ask Jesus about something vital but trivial. A question that's been bothering her. Sabi niya, since you're a prophet, do you mind if I ask this question? Sabi niyo, dapat ang worship nung sa tempo kami kasi sa bundok eh. Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Okay? Our ancestors, okay, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. You know, this was a woman, though he wanted to worship, though he, she wanted to do what is right, she was ignorant of who to worship. Okay? Sabi ni Jesus, we worship what we do know for salvation is from the Jews. Yet, sabi, don't worry, a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is a spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know, I know that. Hey, I'm about to close, can you come up? Hey. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I the one is speaking to you. This is amazing. Let me tie it all together. Remember, the woman was, why was she there? What was the reason why she was there? She was, say it, why was she there? She was thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty for a physical water. So every day, she would brave the heat of the sun. That despite it was hard, mainit, she would go and get water to at least somehow quench her thirst. Mapawi yung uhaw niya, pero ang problema nga, yung tubig, no, despite ilang beses siyang pumunta, hindi siya nasasatisfy. That's why Jesus called for a husband because now Jesus parallels the, what is physically happening in her life to, no, to what is happening inside of her. Here is a picture of a woman thirsty. No, she's been coming to different men, coming to different wells. Okay? But unfortunately, no, all these wells no, that she thought, what, no, now you need to understand. Okay? The woman... Why? Why, why? What was she doing with, with, with men? She was looking for a man that was worthy of her love. That she can adore, that she can give herself and surrender her life to. But unfortunately, time after time, men betrayed her. Men who didn't deserve her love that didn't deserve her purity but despite the fact that she has been hurt despite the fact that this man never satisfied her 
She just keeps on coming back and coming back for more. Can I tell you something about you as a person? You know, there's something in us that wants to adore. And sometimes because we don't know what to worship or who to worship, we throw ourselves into worshiping what? Careers, people. You know, you, you, you want, you're longing for something worthy of your time. Kaya some people binubus nila sa career, sa trabaho, in the hopes that by, by giving ourselves to this, we find something worthy. But you know what's the scary part? When after you have given your best and given your all, you deemed that thing unworthy. Just last week, sad news. Another person, you know, a lot of people commit suicide these days. And you might be thinking, why is that? What's wrong with our society? Despite that we are supposedly more comfortable. And, and apparently this woman was not no ordinary woman. She was Kate Spade. And if you don't know who Kate Spade is, no, Kate Spade is the designer of the brand, the, no, Kate Spade. Okay. I know this because I'm married to a woman <laughs> who loves bags. Every time, no, and dito mahal niyan, parang nakita ko one time yung price sa yung wallet lang, parang 12,000 wallet. Okay. Yung bags, no, 20,000, no, but, but sa ibang bansa, no, pa, sa, sa, lalo na pag sale, ang mura. No, of course, mahal pa rin, pero ano. And Kate Spade started uh, designing bags, I think, a few decades back and it became no it became such a success okay eventually she sold the company guess what for how much 120 million dollars <laughs> from starting with six bag designs it became a multinational brand a multi-million dollar company she sold it 120 million dollars to a company and that company sold it again to coach guess for how much two billion dollars 120 million dollars so we 100 million times 50 that's what that's what 50 times 100 imagine how rich this woman is how successful her career is she's also married she's also married no more okay marriage na, hindi siya naghiwalay. May anak sila, 13 years old. Pinagbili niya yung company. Nag-start ulit ng bago. Successful na naman. Umangat na naman. And for some unknown reason, at age of what? I think, how old? 40-something. Took her life. Because despite the success, the business wasn't worthy. Why do some people take their lives? Because you know, they deemed a guy, a girl worthy. And after giving their everything, you realize it was unworthy. You realize it's still nothing there. You're still thirsty. Some people throw their lives away into drugs, into alcohol. No, bakit ka bumabalik balik sa drugs? Kanun din. Eh? For a moment, it satisfies. It gives you a high like no other. But ka bumabalik, no, kahit sinasaktan ka sa ng boyfriend mo, no, balik ka ng balik ng girlfriend mo. Kasi it gives you that feeling of being loved, but it's only for a moment. things, no matter how grand, no matter even how beautiful it may be, is unworthy. Why do we spend so much time? Why would a young boy, a young man spend a whole night playing a video game? You know why? Because at that moment, no, he's, it, it, 
he thinks it's worthy of its time why do you spend three hours on Facebook because it's worth in a way you're you're giving that your time you're spending your life on it but at the end you realize it's just why did I just do that and you come back for more but still empty still thirsty because apparently we worship what we do not know Jesus time is coming when it's not important whether on the mountain or on the temple whether in a church building or a cinema this is just superficial God is raising up worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth such the father seeks you know what worship in the Bible is? In the Greek, the Greek word for worship, and I'll be closing with this. The Greek word for worship is, can you put it up? Is it there? No, not that Greek. I mean Hebrew. Hebrew. Not the English. for worship is shaka it means to bow down to prostrate oneself fall down before God in humility 166 times it was mentioned 144 114 times it means to bow down to bow down to adore hey. it's bow down to acknowledge that wow you deserve worship you deserve my life. You deserve my honor. The Greek for worship is amazing. The Greek word, which is why, why Greek? It's where the New Testament Bible is. No, The Greek word for worship is proskuneo. It, it's actually two words joined together. No? Proskuneo, to kiss. No, pros, to kiss. And, and kuneo means to kneel down in prostration. The Greek word has to do about kiss. How many of you know you cannot really kiss unless you're close? Unless it's a flying kiss. <laughs> but when you kiss, okay, when you kiss, it talks about a certain closeness, a certain intimacy. And this is what worship is. That's why sabi ni Jesus, di ba? Ang sabi ni God, ang complain niya. No, these people worship me with their lips but their heart is far no God doesn't want you to be far real worship is supposed to be intimate God wanting to be close to us to be known to be adored okay? and it's to kneel down no? hey, that, the combination of intimacy and closeness and, and kneeling down and adoration that's what the Greek word is now the word the English word worship Okay? Comes from what? Comes from the Anglo-Saxon word, worth. Okay? Worship. To give reverence to a supernatural being because of his worth, glory, distinction, and honor. You lie. Worship. He is worthy. Okay? What is worthy? What is worthy of your life? What is worthy of your time? Okay? Are we simply, no, you know, okay? are we simply giving our time to what? No? To some worthless <laughs> reading of our news feeds some people deem worthy their careers to even the point that they're sacrificing their family okay, they're sacrificing their time with their children kaya ang daming taong ganda ng career sira ang pamilya you think really that no that your, your, your career is worth more than your family than your relationship with your husband or your wife Why do, why do people buy no drugs? Even if it's expensive, even if it's wrong. Because there's a, a, a deception in the mind that somehow these things are worthy. But at the end, 
you're still empty. We keep on coming back because, not because it satisfies, but because it does not. of Revelations, Revelations in chapter 4, John the Beloved was crying because there was a, there was a, a scroll with seven seals and there was an angel that shouted, who is worthy, who can open the seals, but no one on earth nor in heaven was worthy and then I, then I heard tribe of Judah has triumphed. He is worthy to open the street, to, to break the seals and open the scroll. And, sabi ni, and then John the, John the Beloved saw, sabi, you can put up that verse. Sabi, sabi and then I saw a lamb that has been slain, that has died. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is worthy. He is worthy. Jesus told the woman, Sabi niya kasi, one day when the Messiah comes, I know he will tell us everything. And Jesus told the woman, the one you're talking about, the Messiah, I'm he. And then what happens next is so amazing. Okay, let's close the story. Okay, can you put up the verse? Just then, the meeting the disciples. Uh, they returned and were surprised to find Jesus talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Now look at verse 28. John could have opted to skip that part. But he did not skip that part. He made sure that we saw it. He made sure that we are reading it right now. What does it say? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Now check this out. Jesus, John could have said, And the woman went to town. No, no, no. Sorry. She left her water jar. Is it not that the reason he came to the well was to draw water with that jar? But it seems she has no need for it anymore. Because she has found living water. I want us to pray right now. Let's all stand up. every one of us can relate to the story of that woman. We've been going to different wells hoping that it's going to give us satisfaction. Maybe some of you are, have hopped from one relationship to another seeking for someone worthy of your love. Maybe you've been trying to prove yourself in your career trying to prove yourself as a person seeking someone seeking something worthy of your service or maybe you're into some kind of bondage pornography drugs that for a moment you feel high you think it is worthy but it and you realize it's just temporary that more than it satisfies it's destroying Of Hippo said the following: Our hearts are restless 
until we find our rest in Him in Thee. Our hearts will be forever empty and restless. You can try everything in this world. You can be successful with all the money that you've got. But until you find your rest in Jesus, that's the only time you can leave your water jar behind. He is worthy. Father, Lord, first of all, we, we want to ask forgiveness. Lord, we have been we have been worshiping, we have been giving our lives, giving our time, spending our energies to things that are not worthy. But Lord, today we want to worship you. You are worthy. There is no one like you, nothing in earth that can be compared to you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for dying for us on the cross. Thank you for such a supreme act of sacrifice. Lord, we worship you, Lord. 